Hi guys, I have zero makeup on and you know what that means. I'm getting another facial and today I'm gonna see Renee Rouleau! Hi YouTube! I'm so excited for you guys to see what she does during a facial and hear her talk about her products and her philosophy because she's been one of my favorite estheticians for a long time, for years you guys. And I feel like this is gonna be a real, real treat for you. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at Susan's skin and do a proper skin analysis. And so today we're gonna put Susan into one of the nine skin types and uh, make sure that we're giving her a customized facial that addresses all of her specific skin needs. So let's do this. All right, well, first of all, Susan has beautiful skin. Do you have sunscreen on? Uh, I do, That's, I have a moisturizer. Okay, because, perfect. Yeah. And do you also use sunscreen on your neck? Yes, Okay. Cool. and chest. So what I want you to do is every day, do one application to your face, then squeeze out the tube, and then do a second application to the neck and chest. And when I look at your skin today, is this a normal Susan skin day, or is there anything out of the ordinary? Well, I just uh, finished getting three rounds of a laser treatment called 4D, so okay. it's a tightening treatment, but okay. it did make my skin drier than usual. Okay, when and, was, and when was the last treatment? Like, when did you have it? Uh, I wanna say two weeks ago. Okay. And then I've got my almond melasma and stuff from my pregnancy. Okay. It's starting to fade though with a, the products I've been using. You know, pregnancy is, do you think all this will go away? I mean, assuming you really work at it, but are, or are you somebody that still has a few freckles? Oh, I still, there? definitely. Okay, do you ever get breakouts? N not really. <laughs> I say that with a laugh because I know that'll piss everybody off. Okay, and then what about sensitivity? Like, do you ever feel like, does your skin get hot easily? Do products sting? Do you feel like you get irritated? Do you mm -hmm. get rashes? No. Okay. And what would you say your top three skin concerns are in order of priority? Sagginess, elasticity okay. after pregnancy because I've been losing all that weight too. Okay. The hyperpigmentation. And then I guess I don't want my like my wrinkles on my forehead. I didn't get Botox for a year and a half. Would you say in general you your skin is kind of more normal, meaning like maybe you get a little T-zone oil maybe a little bit in the summer but can kind of feel drier during the winter? I'm normal leaning drier and okay. that, that was more so during pregnancy. Okay. So I'm definitely going to put you in a skin type 6. In general, skin type 6 is a skin type that we want to focus on preventative aging. We want to keep good blood flow and circulation to the skin because that brings oxygen and new nutrients to the skin cells. We want, you know, targeted anti-aging ingredients. We want to keep hydration levels up in the skin. We don't necessarily need to use things that are super heavy because you're not bone dry, right? You're still kind of like more that middle of the road. And also it addresses hyperpigmentation as well. So we want to target melasma. We want to target, you know, aging, good uh, collagen um, stimulating ingredients, keeping the texture of the skin really smooth and keeping the skin kind of lit from within and glowy. All right, so let's get started. So this is a cleanser. It's my soothing aloe cleansing milk. You know, that's always uh, the first part of the facial is to clean the skin. I'm a believer that people should wash their face every morning with a proper cleanser. And the reason is, is because the most important product that will ever touch your skin is your sunscreen. And we wanna make sure that that can properly work and do its job. And so at night, even though, you know, there wasn't makeup on the skin, but you know, you could have moisturizers that have oils in them. Natural sebum and oil does get excreted from the skin while you sleep. You could use a hand cream on your hands and maybe now you're, hands, you know, are touching your face and you're getting oils on there. The purpose of cleansing in the morning is that you want a clean slate. Everything that goes on afterward, such as an alcohol-free toner, such as a vitamin C serum, um, along with your sunscreen, you really want it to do its job. So first what we're going to do on Susan's skin is we're going to be using this cranberry enzyme peel and this is working to lower the skin's pH. Uh, with enzymes and acids and start to dissolve some of the surface dryness. And Susan, you mentioned you are kind of recovering from the laser treatments. We wanna, you know, very gently remove off any superficial kind of micro dryness that you still have lingering on the skin. It doesn't look dry. I mean, granted you said you just put moisturizer on, so naturally the skin is gonna be a little more moist. So that's probably why it doesn't look that way, but hydration levels look good in the skin, but this is just gonna start dissolving some of that and then also working on some of the pigment cells because we're trying to lift those off. We're gonna leave this on for a few minutes. It may feel slightly tingly or you may feel nothing at all. So now we're just removing the enzyme peel and all the surface dry skin cells, some of the pigmented cells are loosened up and then we're gonna roll into 
a physical exfoliation. Now that we've done that dissolving, now we wanna lift off discolored cells and lift away dryness. So now we're putting on a little uh, skin softening exfoliating foam to do our bioabrasion treatment. This wets the skin and really ensures that the cells are loosened up so they'll lift off easily. So bioabrasion is the next generation of microdermabrasion. So it uses uh, a diamond head tip that pulls a little bit of suction and it pulls the skin close to the diamond head tip, helps to lift off the discolored cells. So this is certainly much stronger than a facial scrub, but it's also much more gentle than the traditional microdermabrasion that was so big in the 90s. Okay, so now we've done two steps of exfoliation. So I kind of call that out with the old, and now we'll be doing in with the new. So the idea is that we've exposed all these fresh new baby cells, and we want to really nourish them and also apply some melanin suppressing agents to send a signal to the melanin cells to calm down and go to sleep. So now I'm gonna apply vitamin C and E treatment. And so this is what I'm gonna put on all those fresh cells first. I am gonna layer on another serum afterward, but the vitamin C is, you know, this has three forms of vitamin C as well as E, but this is what's really targeting the melanin activity and also brightening the skin and then also um, hydrating the skin as well. So next, I'm gonna put on Skin Drink Concentrate. And this is a hyaluronic acid serum, just to layer in a little extra hydration. So this is a handheld ultrasound machine, and this is helping send sound waves down through the skin so that all the active ingredients are pushed a little bit further. You can also feel the heat as well. Anytime that you're increasing heat to the skin, you're dilating the blood vessels, and this can also help uh, with absorption, but then also we're helping with circulation, really getting blood moving in a better way. We're pushing out toxins and bringing fresh oxygen to the skin. So now I heated up this barrier repair mask. So this has ceramides in it and phospholipids and really good ingredients for barrier repair. I think coming off of the laser treatments, that's really important for us to also focus on making sure the lipids are really strong in your skin because the whole thing with melasma also is that it's a sign of inflammation. And so when your barrier is intact, there's less inflammation occurring, which means pigment cells can settle down better. So we're gonna leave this on for about five minutes. Now we're gonna put on this effervescent mask onto Susan's skin. Ooh, that's not what I expected. Yeah. And this has all different plant extracts and herbs in it. It's really good for increasing circulation to the skin, bringing a little heat to the skin. Again, it's with your skin, we just wanna keep that lit from within thing going on. So this is all about oxygenating and stimulating circulation. You don't really need extractions, but if you did need extractions, this would also help facilitate the softening of the skin to make extractions a little bit easier for removal. So this can actually kind of take the place of steam. The goal, certainly after a facial and something that I'm monitoring throughout is how much pinkness is brought to the skin. As I mentioned, you know, it's important to have good circulation in the skin for all the reasons that I mentioned. And with age, circulation slows down. So that's why, you know, 
people as they get older, you, and you actually lose capillaries in the skin, but as a woman gets older, the skin starts to look grayer. So the goal after facial is we want some pinkness to the skin. We don't want the skin beet red because we don't want to stimulate it too much because then you're putting pressure on capillaries and you're dilating capillaries and capillaries tend to get weaker with age anyway, which is why like some people start to show them around the nose or the cheeks. Um, so, and it's not a bad thing, but like, if they continue to get worse and worse, then they become more visible. And then some people want to have them lasered off if it's something that bothers them. But then we, at the end of the facial, we don't want the skin to not have any pinkness, right? Because a sign of pinkness shows that you have some good healthy circulation in the skin. So one of the things that I do to my own skin to keep good circulation is at night, I'll hang my head upside down for two minutes a night. And basically it flushes my skin and brings that, you know, all that blood to the face and it's good for bringing a healthy glow and just making sure that everything is functioning properly in the skin. So now after I remove that, I'm gonna put a little more vitamin C back on because again, this is a targeted treatment we're doing today for you for your very light grade, you probably have like a grade two melasma. I mean, it's moving down to grade one that's kind of my own little system when I'm working with clients is kind of grading what level their melasma is, but you're like grade one and a half probably. But hopefully after this facial, you'll be grade one. So now I'm gonna put on my Hydro Boost Rescue Cream. As I mentioned earlier, we don't want to neglect the neck and nor do we want to neglect the chest. So I'm just doing a light exfoliation treatment on this area. You actually have to be careful with the neck. The neck is actually very sensitive and gets red easily. So if you've ever, ever noticed, like you can sometimes even just like scratch your neck ever so slightly and then you'll have like this red mark for a while. There's a lot of blood vessels in the neck. The skin is thin there. So sometimes with using acids, like an exfoliating acid serum, I tell people to patch test it on the neck because some people can't even use them on the neck because they're, they'll be too irritating. So this is a, a light exfoliating foam and then we're just doing some physical exfoliation here. Now we're mixing up the final mask. I'm using BioCalm Repair Mask, which is one of the masks in my line. And then this is a seaweed powder. And now we'll add some water. And this is not a product that I sell at home. And mainly it's because, I mean, you know, I have so many clients that ask because it's such a good mask, but it's just super messy. put it on Susan's skin. All right, so now we're putting on this finishing mask. So this is my signature seaweed mask, and this has a lot of really hydrating nutrients in it. It feels cold on the skin. Can you tell it feels cold? Mm -hmm. So now what we want to do is kind of constrict those capillaries that we dilated ever so slightly from all the heat and stimulation. We want to lower the skin back the skin's internal temperature back to its normal temperature. And the nice thing about this mask is that it creates an occlusive seal over the skin. It's not breathable whatsoever. So everything that's on the skin underneath has no place else to go but into the skin. And then we'll let it dry about 10 minutes. While that dries, I'm just gonna put a nice cream on the neck and chest. So what are some of the differences since you've been an esthetician for 30 years? I can't believe that. What are some of the, like the differences and trends and everything that you've seen? One of the things that I've learned is that when it comes to, so you mentioned the word trends, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden some new ingredient will be kind of like trending and buzzing. Mm -hmm. And I typically don't hop on those ingredients right away because everyone wants to be first to market with a trend, but time will tell 
if that ingredient really performs the magic that they're marketing it as. You know, the ones that you know really are working are the ones that have been around a long time. First of all, like vitamin C, the different types of vitamin C. I mean, I remember that when that first came to market and it's more popular than ever now, which means there's data and research behind it showing that, hey, this really does work. The fact that acids are now more popular than they are since the early, you know, have been since the early 90s mean they actually work and they, and they, you know, they're, they're considered performance ingredients. I've also seen, you know, the access that people have to much more advanced products and treatments they can do at home. I've certainly seen the rise of estheticians. I mean, when I got into the industry late 80s, I mean, no one even knew what that was. People were like, an anesthesiologist or an, or an esthetist? It was kind of an unknown profession. And so now, you know, an esthetician or a facialist is like a household name. There's certainly so much awareness about ingredients and percentages and people focusing on, you know, consumers focusing on ingredient lists and wanting to learn, getting their own knowledge and making their own decisions instead of always just relying on a professional. People are just much more curious, but there's a lot of great opportunities to learn. What else? Yeah, I mean, obviously all the advancements with um, all the medical treatments, all the Botox and fillers, that's huge. Yeah, the awareness of sunscreen, you know, wearing it every day, you know, it was when we did realize that the sun was the underlying cause of wrinkles, we thought it was just when you were out in the sun. So people would only wear it in the summer. And so now the awareness of wearing sunscreen 365 days a year and that UV rays can penetrate through windows and even in winter and all of that. So certainly a lot more awareness. I think the challenge, and, and I wish there was um, a little more progress there, but you know, sunscreens are still really tricky to formulate and it's hard for people, especially with oily acne prone skin, to find one that's compatible with their skin and doesn't clog your pores. So, you know, hopefully we'll get more advancements there. It's an exciting time to be an esthetician. People are, you know, more and more are signing up because to be in an industry where you make people feel good and look good and then you get to support your beauty junkie habit. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's great. You can actually feel this. Do you feel how slimy Ooh, and gooey yeah. it feels? That's all the hydration, oh, yeah. but most of the hydration went into your skin. So pretty, Susan, you, you've got great skin. Really pretty, you clearly have taken good care of your skin. You know, you're somebody that really makes your skin a priority. All right, so now I'm gonna put sunscreen on. As I mentioned, you know, sunscreens are still a little tricky for people with acne prone skin. This one's a really great one because it does dry to a matte finish and it doesn't leave the skin greasy at all. But we're gonna do the one application to the face and then go into our second application for the neck. Cause you're not wearing, I think you were wearing a sweater today, right? So your mm -hmm. chest isn't being shown. Okay, so then I'll just do the neck. famous Renee Rouleau Glow. And that is my skin, super glowy after a facial with Renee. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave a link for her website in the description box because she has wonderful products that you guys should try. Um, she talks about your skin type. She actually has a quiz that you can take to figure out what kind of skin type you have and which products would be really good for you. You can't book with her anymore just because she is a busy, busy woman. Her, uh, her client list is huge and, uh, and she's just, a, she's busy. She's traveling all over the place to see her clients these days. But I hope you learned so much from her. Um, you can leave questions below in the comments and you can, you know, maybe even let me know if you wanna see Renee on the channel a little bit more. Talk to you soon.